NVIDIA. NVIDIA. It's a pretty simple um, chart, actually. Um, I, I I don't yeah I don't think there's really any mystery. So first of all, there's no exhaustion because there's no bearish um, divergence that I can see here on the monthly. Right, it is overbought, but things can stay overbought for a very very long time. You're talking about things can stay overbought for like years, right? During these like, semiconductor cycles. If anything, I think the cycle kind of looks like over here with, you know, RSI starting to get overheated right around like December 2015. And it just kept on going up here for like years and price kept on just keep going up, 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 up on bearish divergence. And uh, eventually when when the bearish divergence works out, the price is already a lot higher. So um, it's, uh, it, 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 I, I think it's a pretty simple chart to be completely honest with you. I'll tell you why. Um, it is getting a little bit far away from the Tenkin. Whenever things get a little bit too far away from the Tenkin, bulls tend to get punished for it either by time or by price, right? Here is like maybe a little bit of a combination of, pri uh, of time and price. But I think that's exactly what the month of April is supposed to be for. It's supposed to get, at least get closer to the Tenkin. You can't just keep on going up parabolically forever, right? You need to take a break at some point if you want a more sustainable bull market to, to keep going. So. Um, I think NVIDIA is actually going to do um, pretty decent, but it does need some time to kind of cool off, which is exactly what April does. Could it keep going on further, you know, for another month or two before going up and wait for Tenga to kind of catch up? Could it go down a little bit further and kind of you know, get a little bit closer to it? All these things are possible, um, but it doesn't change the fact that I think NVIDIA is going higher. That's the bottom line. If I take out the... Now, some of the stuff over here, I, I don't like my chart to be a little bit too noisy. I'm just going to draw a Fibonacci level, and it's going to be very, very clear in terms of what NVIDIA is doing. Like, this is not a, a mystery at all when it comes to technical analysis. I'm going to draw it from the previous high over here, and I'm going to draw it all the way down to the cycle bottom, roughly, right? Got rejected over here at the 1.618 Fibonacci level, went sideways for months, eventually broke above, pushed through the 2.618 like Swiss cheese, and got to the 3.618 in a hurry, got rejected there. Sure, it's gonna get rejected there. You expect it to just keep going higher and without like taking a break. You I mean you do end up having you know months number one and two like closing way above the upper bullish band here on the monthly. Of course, you're gonna warn a cool down. You know, you don't want to just keep going. Like the more these parabolic candles over here, the longer you're gonna to have to have cool down, right? So I, you know, right now you only have two candles closing above the upper Bollinger Band. You have like a couple of months going sideways. So what? Twenty month moving average is still pointing up a lot higher. Do I sound more condescending on live stream? I'm sorry. Like I, I, I guess I protect my emotions better when I'm doing planned videos. But let me take a sip of water here real quick. <clears throat> yeah, so it, it's basically just um, sandwiching between these Fibonacci levels over here, going sideways, cooling down some of the indicators, allowing things to kind of catch up a little bit. I was talking about the Tenkin. So it might end up going sideways for another m month or two. Or it, it decides not to. It decides that the upper bullish band is a magnet, which it could be. <clears throat> right now, it's at nine thirty-six, and it could end up pushing price a lot higher. And it could knock on the three point six one eight again, and it could determine whether or not the technicals has already cooled down enough for it to keep going up. I actually don't mind if price just kind of went sideways for another month, but um, that, that's that's just me. And if it does, it's going to drive everybody crazy. Is this the top? Is this one of those, you know, like Michael's strategy top? That's going to catch you all off guard. Is this like one of these tops over here? I don't think so. Look at how parabolic this has been. Like one, two, three, four, five. Like this is not sustainable. Whenever you have something like this, like the, all the bullish energy has essentially got exhausted. And you're going to have a harder time really trying to make another push up, right? That's not NVIDIA. 
NVIDIA is um, doing something very different. It's cooling down when it needs to. It doesn't really want to close about the upper Bollinger Band for too long. If it does, it just goes sideways and cool things down. Again, I just show you the monthly RSI. I don't think, you know, it's really that um, exhausted or anything like that, right? So, yeah, I mean, I think it's doing all the necessary things. If you look at the Supuichi cloud, that's even going to give you a much better picture here, too. I think it's done its job in terms of back testing, you know, the, the, the Tenkan and Kijin. In a bull market, honestly, all it needs to do is just back test the Super Ichi Cloud tank and incision, and they can go up higher. That's what it's been doing for years. Like most of the time, the tank and the blue line is good enough. Sometimes they have to go down a little bit further and back test the kitchen underneath. And that's okay. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is the bear market. Far from it, actually. Um, I, I'm kind of <laughs> done talking about NVIDIA. I'm bullish on it. I, I'm, I'm being exposed to it, so I'm, I'm happy with that.